So Cassie, we're going to talk about how you make decisions on how to pursue a PhD and how to find the right program. So you have an interest in being a teacher mm -hmm. and an interest in immunology and infection. Mm -hmm. There are lots of careers that you can have um, that don't require a PhD. Mm -hmm. So what was it that you want to be able to do that absolutely requires a PhD and how you found your way to our program? The long-term goal is the teaching, but ideally kind of in the college um, at the college level, and that really stemmed from my experiences going through undergrad and being interested in science going into undergrad, but not necessarily knowing if I was capable enough or if this was going to be something I would be able to do. And my professors were really incredible um, and really helped with kind of inspiring me for moving forward and continuing to pursue uh, science afterwards. And so that's kind of inspired me to to pay that back in a sense and with the very altruistic goal of helping the individuals that might not know their abilities and helping them kind of unearth that. So that's what led me to uh, pursuing a PhD since being a professor requires that. Um, and then uh, what led me to the M3D program, you know, the interest in infectious disease uh, kind of is rooted in translational research and having a clinically relevant kind of application to your research. Um, and so the M3D kind of mission statement of having that translational component be such a core part of your PhD experience was what really drew me in. So it's been a combination of what I'm interested in and what my long-term career goals are and finding the program that is able to address both. When looking at programs, how do you make a decision between ours is an interdepartmental, largely interdisciplinary, but interdepartmental and interinstitutional program versus a standalone department-based PhD program? My interest in infectious disease and immunology, that might sound like was more geared towards immunology. My interest was really rooted in infectious disease with kind of that secondary interest in immunology. And because of that, I wanted to be able to explore infectious disease research from a couple different fields. So I primarily applied to and focused on interdisciplinary uh, programs. Um, I think the fact that M3D is interinstitutional is kind of a special part about it. And I think that uh, affords a lot of opportunities. So that is, I think, another element to look for when you're when you're looking for graduate programs that kind of fit your interests. What I've heard about interdisciplinary uh, programs, and Bill, you can <laughs> comment on this, uh, is that they can be broad. And so if you don't have enough of a focus, you might get lost in kind of the different options. Um, that has not been my experience. And I haven't talked to, you know, many people in at least in my cohort that have had that, but I think that is kind of one element to consider. Um, but I do think that if you have kind of a grounded interest of something that you're wanting to pursue, but could see it from a couple different fields, then interdisciplinary programs could be a good option. Um, but I think those disciplinary programs offer kind of a kickstarted way to become an expert within that field, maybe a little bit sooner, a little bit more quickly than an interdisciplinary option. Um, I do think UW does foster a really collaborative environment. I think no matter what program I was in, if it was, you know, a single discipline uh, focused program or under a single department, you know, I've been able to work with uh, labs in microbiology and bioengineering because I don't know what's going on in that <laughs> realm. Mm -hmm. And it's been really helpful and really wonderful. So I think um, within just a disciplinary program, if you feel like that institution fosters a really collaborative environment, then you'll have a lot more resources at your hands. So the advice I give to all grad students, regardless of program, is that um, especially if you come to a big research one university like University of Washington and all of our collaborations, almost any lab you end up is going to be doing great science. Our faculty here are well-funded and well-regarded in the scientific community. And so the purpose of the rotations, which are pretty standard around life science and bioscience programs, is to go and live the life of being a scientist in that lab. Because what shows up on a faculty member's website could be all the papers they publish. They could be you know, well regarded by the scientific community. And that comes at a cost sometimes of the work-life balance in that lab. And so by being a student and knowing you're committing there to five years, you want to go and live that life for a short period of time. Again, 10 weeks isn't super long, but most of the good and the bad parts will come out in that time because you're making a decision not only to do the science, but to be part of that really small community for the next four plus years. 
And so I encourage everyone to take full advantage of that rotation, to talk to as many students as possible, and to learn where the equipment is and you know what are what are the good community development things that go on in the lab. Are there you know go for weekend hikes or go to see a concert or go to a happy hour, um, but also how do you support each other as you get ready for your conferences and bring posters together and giving your talks, and as long as that all works for you, then then you found a great place. But it's not just great science because you want to make sure that it's a well-supported uh, community as well. So now that we have selected you, um, what did you want to find out about sort of the things beyond the program? Um, what was the program fit? How did cost of living in Seattle? All those other things that go into your life for the next you know five to six years. How did that weigh as you were looking at our program and com comparing it to other programs you were interested in at the time? It's not just wanting to go to one institution to work with Professor X or Y. And I think that really is encompassed in some of those additional variables to consider, you know, city versus somewhere that's uh, more rural. Uh, the cost of living component is important. Um, and, you know, what the environment, does it facilitate, you know, the activities or hobbies you're interested in? The other bit of guidance I give to graduate students as or pr prospective graduate students is, um, you know, for you, you grew up in Ballard and you, you it became very clear to me that you wanted to stay in Seattle. And so my advice in that situation is to apply to multiple programs with similar research interests um, within a university or within an area. And then the other side is sometimes I talk to students who say, I really want to be a biochemist or I, I want to study um, you know, a, a T cell regulatory process and they want to be an immunology program. And that different advice is to say, well, pick the five or six top immunology programs around the country and apply to them. But that's a self-reflection that each candidate has to do on their own to figure out where do I over my effort. And if it's really important to be in an area, then it's to stack the deck in that favor. If it's really important to be in um, a particular research area, then stack the deck in that favor. But you know, play that in your head first and then make the decision on how to commit your effort towards applications. And the ultimate goal is to get into a program and get a PhD. Um, the current numbers are that 10% of PhD holders in, in biosciences and STEM at large go on to tenure track faculty positions. And so many students come in saying, I'm going to be a faculty member. And those who want to do it and continue to want to do it, they can be and, and are successful of going down that path after they get their PhD. But you also want to pick a program that gives you opportunities to explore alternative careers um, or non-academic careers. And every graduate student shouldn't be mentored by a single person. We encourage multiple mentors and mentors inside and outside of the lab and people who can give you advice on your research progress, people who can give you advice on career outcomes, and people who can give you advice on just general things in your life. So the lab that you're in and the, the leader of that lab cannot and should not be the only person to give you advice. And so I'm just so happy that you found those people already. And I know that your, your group of mentors are growing and also you are now paying it forward by being a mentor to other people who come through your labs as Attempting. rotation students. and <laughs> you, you are and you will do a lot of that in the future. It's sort of a cyclical thing. I guess the final question I have is, you know, again, going back to when you thought about applying, um, were there any other factors that we haven't covered? I kind of skirted around this, but haven't talked about it directly, but the idea of the community that's fostered and developed by the program. Uh, and I think there's kind of two main ways that community takes form. Uh, I feel like the first is, more personal and specific to your situation and you know if uh, you're an international student making sure that the program has the wherewithal and knowledge to navigate visas or health insurance or some of those factors um, so kind of that more personal side of if you have a, a need that you feel like you've identified as um, something you would like to have a specific community for make sure to look for that um, and then kind of the second element of that is just more broadly and I think general for anyone pursuing graduate school that there should be some intentional community development or building within the program, um, either to the institution or just, you know, within its own ecosystem. Um, it's going to be a difficult and challenging five to seven years or longer, no judgment. Um, and so knowing that you have that ability to invest in the community, I think will make you feel a lot more sane, even if it's just a happy hour where you're complaining. You just need a community where you can be safe with and, and unload because yes. there are hard times and we need to support each other.
So my last piece of advice to anyone who's watching and is going to be applying to school is um, the interview is as much an interview of the program as they are interviewing you. Um, and so be sure that you come in prepared to figure out how you would fit in as well as um, come up with questions to really critically ask them how they're going to support you. There's lots of outcomes of a PhD and you know being a scientist is one of them, being in the academy or outside or other options, being in public policy. But really what these programs are training students to do is to think critically, to see a problem in the world and to design an experiment or ask a question to address that problem, test it, and then go on and apply that to the next question that comes along. And so regardless of programs that students choose or when you're in a program, regardless of the research area that you're in, at the end of the day, we're, we're training you to be thinkers and we want you to go off and apply your ability to think to improve the world beyond our university when it's all said and done.